is our uh, topic today, which is um, the Promise Institute for Human Rights, uh, which is at the School of Law at UCLA, presented by Professor, Professor Jessica Peake. Uh, and the title is The Promise Institute, One Year On. What have we done and where are we going? Where are we heading? Okay, so as you probably are already familiar, the Promise Institute for Human Rights at UCLA School of Law was established in April 2017 with a founding gift of $20 million. Dr. Eric Israelian, a faculty member at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA and the producer of the film, The Promise, a feature film about the Armenian Genocide released in April 21, uh, 2017, spearheaded the donation effort on behalf of the team at Survival Pictures. Ms. Peek will present information about the mission of the Institute, its current activities, and its projected programming for the future. She will also reflect on the possible collaborative involvement by the Armenian community with the Institute. Professor Jessica Pick is the Director of the International and Comparative Law Program at, and Assistant Director of the Promise Institute for Human Rights at the School of Law at UCLA. Since arriving at UCLA in January 2014, Ms. has developed relationships with several human rights organizations, creating internship, externship, and pro bono opportunities for students. She has also assisted in the expansion of UCLA Law's Foreign Legal Study and Exchange Program. Jessica has an LLB from the University of Sheffield, United Kingdom, and two LLMs, one from the University of Leiden, the Netherlands, and the second from the University of Pennsylvania. And she is currently finishing her doctoral thesis on international criminal procedure at the University of Pennsylvania. So I'm very pleased to invite Jessica to give us uh, this very interesting talk. Please, thank you. Sensitivities of the story. 
storytelling. Um, it's a really beautiful film and it tells this very difficult story in a really accessible way. And I know that the film is going to be a really important teaching tool about those horrific events for years to come. As Sonia said, the donation for the creation of the Promise Institute was spearheaded by Dr. Eric Israelian, who is a uh, medical doctor at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, and he was also one of the producers of the Promise film. Uh, he worked with a number of others on producing that film at Survival Pictures and um, with a, a variety of other people. Survival Pictures is a production company that was founded by the late Kirk Kerkorian and is dedicated to, to telling stories of perseverance and human endurance. I'm sure some of you here knew Kirk Kerkorian, who was a Southern California businessman and philanthropist who founded the Lindsay Foundation in 1989 and the Dream Fund at UCLA in 2011 to support education, medical research, and other projects to benefit people around the world. Although I never got to meet Mr. Kerkorian personally, I'm really happy that we can continue to be part of his legacy through the Promise Institute. And we are extremely grateful to Eric and his team at Survival Pictures for their tireless efforts in working with us at UCLA Evolve to put this institute together. The LA Times has called the, the gift to create the institute a unique blend of Hollywood and human rights. And we are deeply honored that the Promise Institute shares its name with this important film. It's really our hope that through the Institute, we will be able to address some of the most pressing concerns to the Armenian community um, arising out of that genocide, as well as human rights concerns the world over. As Eric has said, both the feature film and our new Institute bear the word promise to reflect a commitment not to forget the atrocities of the past, and to fight against intolerance and persecution today. We at UCLA couldn't be more thrilled about the creation of the Promise Institute, what it means for our students, our law school, and the broader community. I was invited here today to tell you a little bit about the Promise Institute and what we've been doing. Um, we're still very new, but we've accomplished a tremendous amount during our first year of existence. And what I'm gonna do today is tell you some of the things we've done uh, over the past year, a couple of the things we're planning for next year, and some thoughts about some of the long-term direction for the Institute. First of all, uh, I want to tell you briefly about the mission for the Promise Institute. Our overarching goal is to be the Center for Human Rights Education, Research, and Advocacy, certainly at UCLA and around the region, but also nationally and internationally. And we believe that the scope of the gift will allow us to fulfill these aspirations. Our mission is really to train the next generation of human rights lawyers and leaders, to generate vital scholarship for the development of human rights, and to provide programs for on-the-ground assistance to address the most pressing contemporary human rights concerns of our times, including genocide studies, international migration and refugee crises, and post-conflict human rights, among many other things. In doing so, the Institute brings together faculty with expertise and experience in international human rights, immigration, national and international security, civil rights, constitution writing, the laws of armed conflict, transnational and international criminal justice, environmental law, public interest law, and a whole host of other legal topics. Through cross-disciplinary work in fields such as political science, sociology, history, public health, for example, the Institute and its partners throughout UCLA explore the complex relationships between economic development, health, democracy, rule of law, and human rights. And we hope that this interdisciplinary approach will lead to deep and lasting insights into the way human rights protections can be fostered and implemented effectively. Through the work of the Institute, our students will gain a strong foundation in human rights law and will have the opportunity to participate in clinics, experiential programs, and other endeavors that will enhance their educational experience and, provide, uh, sorry, and prepare them for impactful careers in the field. The Promise Institute supports a diverse program of scholarship and fellowship programs, as well as activities and publications that will serve as a forum for international human rights lawyers and scholars at UCLA and beyond. Our work can really be split into three main pillars, each of which allows us to engage with different sections of the community. The first is public programming. We have a robust public program that allows us to engage with people beyond the law school, 
including the broader UCLA community of students, faculty, and staff, as well as people outside of campus. Second, we have a strong student focus that enables us to develop the next generation of human rights lawyers and leaders. And this includes providing a robust human rights curriculum for our students, as well as providing our students with support in the form of grants, scholarships, and fellowships to allow them to pursue human rights related opportunities during and post law school. Finally, we're an academic institution, so the Promise Institute provides substantial research support to our faculty members to enable them to engage in cutting edge research and to generate vital scholarship to ensure the development of human rights policy to deal with these contemporary challenges. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time discussing each of three, these three pillars in turn. The first pillar that I want to talk about, which is perhaps the most relevant to those people in the room, is public programming. Public programming is the key way we hope to engage with the community, and we've already done a lot of work this year in building connections with different groups within the Armenian community at, in Los Angeles. Over the past 12 months, we've had an incredibly exciting array of speakers, conferences, and workshops, which have been broadly attended by folks at UCLA, lawyers and policymakers, the general public, and many members of your community as well. I want to tell you about just a few of the events that we've held, and we've held almost 40 events over the past year, so I'm not going to tell you about all of them, um, but I want to highlight some that might be of particular interest to the people in this room to really give you an idea of the scope of the type of programming that we have on offer at UCLA. So throughout the past year, we've had a series of events that have focused on genocide and methods of criminal, international criminal accountability for mass atrocity crimes. Um, we had Nick Kunjian, who is the international co-prosecutor at the Extraordinary Chambers in the Courts of Cambodia, come to speak about the crime of crimes, genocide, international courts, and international politics. And we also had Peter McCloskey, who is a former senior trial attorney at the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, who talked about investigating and prosecuting genocide. Through talks such as these, our students in the community are able to learn more about some of the accountability mechanisms available under the United Nations system for genocide and other mass atrocities. The International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia is a UN court of law which deals with war crimes that took place during the Balkans in the 1990s. Since its establishment in 1993, it has irreversibly changed the landscape of international humanitarian law, human rights, and international criminal law, and has provided victims with an opportunity to voice the horrors that they witnessed and experienced during that conflict. The Extraordinary Chambers in the Courts of Cambodia is a joint enterprise between the United Nations and the Cambodian government, which was set up to try persons accused of being senior leaders and those most responsible for the genocidal events that occurred during the period of democratic Kampuchea between 1975 and 1979, during which approximately 2 million people died under the rule of Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge. That death toll of 2 million people accounted for about one quarter of the total population during that period, and millions of others were victims in other ways. Bringing speakers like these to campus enables our students and the public to learn about strategies for accountability from people working in the field, and also helps to spread awareness about the atrocities that occurred in, in Cambodia and in the former Yugoslavia. We were also very fortunate to host a judge from the International Criminal Court, Judge Chang Ho Chun, who is from South Korea. The International Criminal Court is an intergovernmental organization and international tribunal that has jurisdiction to investigate and prosecute individuals for the international crimes of genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. The ICC is another international mechanism by which accountability can be sought for mass atrocities, and it is intended to complement national prosecutions, stepping in where national courts are unwilling or unable to prosecute, or when the Security Council or an individual state refers a case to the court. The ICC is the closest thing that we have to a world court, and it's currently engaged in a number of situations and cases, investigating a wide variety of crimes in a number of countries, including Uganda, the Central African Republic, and Georgia. We were honored to have Judge Chung visit UCLA Law, where he discussed improving the efficiency and effectiveness of ICC proceedings in order to ensure that international criminals are brought to account. 
We've also held a number of events specifically related to Armenia and the genocide. Um, we announced the establishment of the Promise Institute on April 17th of last year at a conference called Contemporary Challenges in Human Rights. At that conference, we had Jeffrey Robertson as our keynote speaker. And as I'm sure you know, Jeffrey Robertson has been a strong advocate for the Armenian community, has represented Armenia before the European Court of Human Rights, and wrote a very well-regarded book on the Armenian genocide. We could think of no more fitting way to mark the creation of the new institute than to have Jeffrey talk about his work advocating for the Armenian people. We also had a screening of Intent to Destroy. Wally is in this photo and is also in this room. Um, who uh, Intent to Destroy is the sister documentary to the Promise film and is a documentary by Joe Berlinger that explores the Armenian genocide and the continuing denial of its existence by the Turkish government using the uh, behind-the-scenes footage of the making of the Promise film. I'm sure most of you in this room have seen this, this documentary, but if you haven't, I would highly recommend it. It's really phenomenal at telling the story and really giving a lot of information to the audience about the Armenian genocide and denial attempts. One of our most high-profile events for the year was a summit called Lights, Camera, Reaction, The Art of Impact in Entertainment. This was a half-day event and a collaboration with Creative Armenia, which is an organization that some of you might have heard of, that also launched in 2017 and focuses on social impact filmmaking. It was also a collaboration with the Skoll Center for Social Impact Entertainment at the UCLA School of Theatre, Film and Television. This summit brought together legal, human rights, and filmmaking communities for a landmark discussion about human rights and entertainment, illuminating the issues of legality and ethics, creative integrity, production, distribution, and publicity as they relate to the mission of bringing human rights stories to the big screen. Film and TV are often the best ways to educate about mass atrocities and to give them a, a historical context. But doing so is not without its, its challenges, as Terry George, Eric Israelian, and the Promise team experience making the Promise film. This conference brought together Emmy and Academy Award winning producers and directors to discuss some of the challenges of shining light on those undertold stories and the effect entertainment can have on raising awareness and calling for accountability. For example, uh, we had Amy Ziering talk about the importance of her films, The Hunting Ground and The Invisible War, two award-winning documentary films, which really drew the attention to the prolific problems of sexual assault on campus and in the US military. Edward Zwick, who directed Blood Diamond, talked about the challenges he faced from the diamond industry in telling that story. Eric, Terry George, and Mike Medaboy talked about the creative and production challenges they faced in making the promised film and all of the opposition it faced from the Turkish community. And act actress Angela Serafarian, so, I did not say That's that. True. Is that right? Yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Shared her experience of playing a character in the promise film and how her family experience influenced her approach to the role. Um, you can actually stream videos of all of these panels on, through our website, and I really encourage you to do that, particularly the final panel that features An uh, Angela, because she really gave this wonderful insight into what she went through playing that role in the Promise film, and I think it's a really valuable um, expression of, of how important it was to tell this story. The Lights, Camera, Reaction Summit culminated in us awarding the inaugural Promise Institute Award for Contribution to Human Rights Through the Arts to Mira Sabino. This award recognizes individuals and organizations who have used their talents to raise public awareness of human rights violations and to advocate for justice. The award was created as part of our mission to honor those who work in the spirit of the Promise movie and to celebrate the power of the entertainment industry to promote social justice and human rights. Mira Sabino was selected as our inaugural recipient of this award in recognition of the tremendous work she's done to advocate for human trafficking victims through her art and the roles that she's played, but also as an ambassador for the United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime on Human Trafficking and the Coalition to Abolish Slavery and Trafficking. 
Mira gave an incredibly moving speech reflecting on her work with victims of human trafficking, as well as her role in the Me Too and Time's Up movements, which have ricocheted through Hollywood over the last several months. The second pillar that I want to talk about is our student focus. Um, we have a really large cohort of students at the law school who intend to promote uh, to pursue human rights careers, and preparing them for that type of work is really at the center of everything we do. Here you can just see a couple of photos of our groups of students. Uh, the one on the right is at our end of year dinner, and also on the left we have a photo from the Human Rights Watch Gala that we took a group of students to in the fall. Our support for students comes in many different forms, including academic and careers counseling, courses, projects, moot courts, and funding. And I'll talk about just a couple of those here. Um, the Promise Institute's main goal is to train the next generation of human rights lawyers and leaders. And to do that, we need to ensure that our students have access to world-class thought leaders and scholars. To that end, in the spring of this year, we brought three leading figures in the human rights world to campus to offer our students an expanded human rights curriculum. Professor Joseph Weiler is a leading human rights and international law expert and a professor at NYU. He was at UCLA in January to teach a short course on how cases make bad human rights law. In this course, Professor Weiler guided our students through key human rights cases from a variety of jurisdictions around the world including the European Court of Human Rights and the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, among many others. This gave our students the opportunity to explore accountability case law from many different courts and to understand some of the challenges in mounting successful prosecutions for human rights violations. Richard Dicker is the International Justice Program Director at Human Rights Watch, and is the, which is the world's foremost human rights organization. <laughs> Richard has been on the front lines of creating many of the international courts and tribunals I've already mentioned, and many, many other accountability mechanisms, including the recently established mechanism for collecting evidence on crimes being committed in Syria. Richard, through his work at Human Rights Watch, has also supported many domestic jurisdictions in bringing cases against violators of human rights at home through something called universal jurisdiction. Richard taught a course at the law school on prospects for international justice. And through that course, our students learned about the many challenges in seeking international accountability for mass violations, but also some of the solutions that Richard has spent his career working on to ensure that war criminals and violators of human rights are not able to operate with impunity. We also brought Professor Basilka Sanchin from the University of Ljubljana uh, to offer a short course on the law of the sea. While the law of the sea is not strictly a human rights issue, it implicates on many international law and human rights adjacent issues. And this was a valuable opportunity for our students to engage in that aspect of international law. Vasilka was just appointed to the United Nations International Human Rights Committee, which is a committee of 18 experts in human rights. And we're really excited that uh, she is affiliated with the Promise Institute. Both Richard Dicker and Joseph Weiler will be returning to teach courses at UCLA in the spring of 2019. And Professor Basilica Sanchez and I will be co-teaching a practice-based course on the International Criminal Court in Ljubljana. So I will be taking some of my students to Ljubljana, she will bring some of her students, and we'll have a cooperative course for a couple of weeks before taking some of our students to visit some of the international courts and tribunals in The Hague. Additionally, we will be bringing our uh, research professor, Ralph Wilde, from the University of College London to teach a course on the extraterritorial extra application of human rights. Another goal uh, of the Promise Institute is to develop programs for on-the-ground assistance to address some of the most pressing contemporary human rights concerns of our time. To that end, in January, one of our current professors, Joseph Barrow, took a group of students to Honduras to conduct field work. This international field experience was an extension of our existing human rights clinic and provided four of our students a unique opportunity to engage in human rights work in an international context, enabling them to learn from leading human rights lawyers and activists on the ground. The students had an intensive immersion experience in the human rights struggle in Honduras 
and were able to participate in a variety of learning modules and workshops in dialogue with partners on the ground, including clients and activists in a collaborative model of human rights advocacy. This was a phenomenal experience for our students and will really help them um, as they move forward into human rights careers in the field. Through these additional courses and the many fantastic human rights courses already offered at UCLA Law even prior to the creation of the Promise Institute, students engaged with the Promise Institute are able to gain a strong foundation in human rights law and will have the opportunity to participate in clinics, experiential programs and other endeavors that will enhance their educational experience and provide them, uh, prepare them for impactful careers in the field. Another thing that we provide support for is research and uh, career development. And I'm going to just talk about three different subsets of support that our students can receive. So the first is working with human rights organizations. Outside of regular classes, students engaged with the Promise Institute have the opportunity to work with a variety of human rights and international accountability organizations to conduct research, drafting, and advocacy on a broad array of human rights issues. For example, this year we had students partnering with the American Red Cross to create some community learning modules about international humanitarian law and human rights. Our students will be uh, delivering these training modules in sessions to different communities throughout Los Angeles beginning in the fall. And through this, our students will be able to engage with populations who have found themselves in LA as a result of seeking refugee status or asylum who may have faced persecution and violence in their home countries. The goal of these trainings is to educate the general population about humanitarian law and human rights so that people come to a basic understanding of what types of treatment they're entitled to under human rights law in their home country, and also under the domestic law of the United States. We will be continuing this project in the coming academic year and expanding it to include a full community college curriculum on humanitarian law. A group of my students are also working with an organization called International Bridges to Justice, which is an NGO based in Geneva whose mission is to protect the basic legal rights of ordinary citizens in developing countries by guaranteeing all citizens the right to competent legal representation, the right to be protected from cruel and unusual punishment, and the right to a fair trial. Our students are involved in developing uh, defense wikis, which are country-specific legal research on criminal process and fair trial rights in individual countries. These wikis are available on a publicly, uh, housed on a publicly available database and can be accessed by human rights defenders around the world. Through International Bridges to Justice, our students are also engaged with some student groups in the Democratic Republic of Congo to develop Know Your Rights campaigns on a variety of fair trial rights. It's our hope that we will be able to scale this up and enter into collaborative projects with a number of student groups from universities around the world. As bringing together groups of students, um, teaches both groups a lot about the nuances of human rights challenges in different settings and helps to facilitate dialogue about how to solve some of those challenges. As a final example of some of these partnerships with international human rights organizations, two of our students this year worked with the Nepalese Human Rights Commission and traveled to Nepal in the spring to act as reporters at a conference of national human rights defenders. This conference brought together human rights activists from around the region to discuss some best practices and challenges to doing human rights work across South Asia. And our students played a valuable role in recording the meeting and producing action reports on next steps. All of these partnerships and experiences helped to train our students to become the next generation of human rights leaders, allowing them to develop practical skills to document and seek accountability for human rights uh, violations. Another thing that the students uh, are supported in through the Promise Institute is moot court. Participation in moot court is a really fantastic part of the law school experience, and I have coached several UCLA law students to participate in some of the most prestigious international law competitions worldwide. These experiences allow students to develop, to develop crucial lawyering skills and to make connections with a broad network of professionals and other students around the world. This year, we had students participate in the Clara Barton Humanitarian Law Competition and the Jean-Pierre Humanitarian Law Competition, 
both of which are simulation based and use role plays to test students' abilities to make oral arguments and to apply international humanitarian law, the law of armed conflict, to real life situations. During the com uh, those competitions, the teams are evaluated on their theoretical knowledge and practical understanding of humanitarian law and their ability to use the law in the context of broader international political system. Taking part in competitions like that is a unique experience and training on the concrete application of IHL is facilitated at the competition by the presence of leading experts in the field. This year, I'm uh, happy to say that both of the teams reached the semi-finals of their competition and we're really hoping that one or both teams will reach the finals next year. The final type of support I'll talk briefly about is financial support that we are able to provide to our students as a result of our generous establishing gift. Um, law school is extremely expensive and human rights practice is not particularly lucrative, at least initially, and so we're providing support to our students to help them engage in this type of work is really, really important to us and really helps them to launch their careers in human rights. So we are providing a range of support from scholarships to attend conferences and workshops for career development to summer and postgraduate fellowships. The Promise Institute provides financial support to students pursuing human rights work during their summer internships, enabling them to travel internationally to carry out human rights research, monitoring, and implementation projects around the world. This summer, we're supporting uh, students doing placements with the International Committee of the Red Cross in Indonesia, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Malaysia, the Center for Constitutional Rights in New York City, and the uh, Human Rights Ombudsman in Nagorno-Karabakh. Finally, and perhaps most importantly for students looking to launch a career in human rights, the Promise Institute supports postgraduate fellowships to enable our students to gain entry-level human rights positions right out of law school. We awarded two fellowships in 2017 to enable our students to undertake work at the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, which is in The Hague, and at the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Washington, D.C. This year, we will be supporting two of our 2018 graduates with fellowships at a human rights organization in Colombia and Reprieve, which is a very well-known human rights organization in London. We are sure that all of these students will go on to do great things and be leaders in the human rights movement, and we're really happy that the Promise Institute is able to support them moving forward. So the third and final pillar that I want to talk about is uh, faculty research that the Promise Institute supports. Like I mentioned, the Promise Institute brings together faculty with expertise and experience in a wide variety of international human rights law uh, areas, including immigration, civil rights, transnational and international criminal law, and many, many others. We're also engaging in a lot of cross-disciplinary and interdisciplinary research. My colleagues are all working on fascinating projects, and I cannot possibly explain all of them here, so I'll just focus on the work of one of my colleagues, Tendai Ishume, who was appointed the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Racism, Racial Dis Discrimination, xenophobia and related intolerance last fall. We're extremely fortunate that her appointment coincided with the creation of the Promise Institute, and we are delighted to be able to support her mandate. UN Special Rapporteurs are supported as independent, are elected as independent experts, and they are really supposed to engage in research and report writing to draw attention to human rights issues and violations within their particular mandate. We hired our first Promise Institute Fellow to support um, Professor Achume by providing legal research and logistical assistance. And Professor Achume is also utilizing the students in our International Human Rights Clinic to engage our students in research on a variety of issues related to her mandate. This year, under Professor Achume's guidance, the students in the International Human Rights Clinic have produced two reports. The first report focused on racial discrimination in the context of laws, policies, and practices concerning, concerning citizenship, nationality, and immigration. The report identified and reviewed contemporary racist and xenophobic ideologies that have a racially discriminatory effect on individuals and groups' access to, citizen, to citizenship, nationality, and immigration status. 
It shows how both are promoted, uh, sorry, how both are prohibited under international human rights law and recommends concrete actions states must take to fulfill their obligations to achieve substantive racial equality. The second report that the students offered or helped to offer addresses the broadening of neo-Nazi groups to embrace white nationalist and right-wing populist movements and the manner in which this broadening poses a serious threat to many racial, ethnic, and religious groups. The report highlights the recent political impact and popularity of neo-Nazism and its embrace even by political leaders at the highest level of national office. The report also surveys the role of technology in consolidating neo-Nazism and its harmful effects, especially where children and youth are concerned. Our students have traveled with Professor Ajume to deliver these reports at the United Nations General Assembly in New York and to the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva. The students also attended a number of high-level meetings with the UN and other stakeholders, and it's really been a phenomenal opportunity and experience for them to get to know the inner workings of the UN system. Professor Achume's work is just one example of the cutting-edge research our faculty are working on and the ways in which that creates opportunities for our students to engage with practical human rights work. As another very brief example, in the spring, the Promise Institute collaborated with the Luskin Center for History and Policy at UCLA, which is another new center on campus that was launched in 2017, to hold an interdisciplinary workshop to combine the academic community and practitioners to discuss pressing human rights challenges and what the past may be able to teach us about the future for the prevention and accountability for mass atrocities. During that workshop, we, find, uh, we focused on five genocides, including Armenia, and we invited Kate Nalkatian from the Armenian Center for Justice and Human Rights to participate. We hope to reconvene a meeting of those participants in the coming year and to continue building a research agenda to address accountability challenges uh, for mass human rights violations. So, where do we go from here? Um, I'm excited to tell you that we recently hired an executive director and that, will, that person will be joining us sometime in August. I can't reveal the name just yet, but there should be a press release either this week or next week, so keep your eyes peeled for that announcement. We're very, very excited for that person to come on board. Once we have the ED in place later this summer, uh, we will be engaging in a strategic planning process over the next several months. Over the past year, Asa Bali, the faculty director, and I have been meeting with stakeholders across campus and mapping the human rights community at UCLA and in Los Angeles. We will be continuing that process of engagement to continue learning about what is going on in the human rights space, to identify where the gaps are, and what the Promise Institute can do to really have a strong impact. We also plan to narrow down our substantive focus areas. There are so many directions that the Promise Institute could take with our work. There are so many different types of human rights challenges. For example, we could look at health and human rights, mass atrocity accountability, migration challenges, the environment and human rights, business and human rights, as just a handful of the many, many examples. So during the strategic planning process, um, we will be narrowing down our initial focus areas which will really enable us to add the greatest value and maximize the impact that the Institute can make. Uh, I hope you'll agree that we've already developed an exciting program during this uh, soft launch year. Um, we are really delighted to be connected to you, the Armenian community. And I was saying earlier to some people at the back how wonderful it's been to meet with and engage with different Armenian groups across Los Angeles in, in thinking about the work of the Promise Institute and what the connections are between the Promise Institute and the Armenian community. And uh, so I look forward to hearing your feedback and any suggestions you might have for the direction that we take and future projects of the Promise Institute. Thank you very much.